Hello everyone, my name is Drew Sukup. On behalf of VMUG, I'd like to welcome you to today's Cloudian webcast. Modernize your data infrastructure with VMware vSAN and Cloudian Object Storage for cloud native and traditional IT applications. Presented by Sanjay Jagad, Senior Director of Product Management and Alliances at Cloudian, and Gopala Surya Narayana, Product Line Manager at VMware. Let's get started. Sanjay, I'll turn it over to you now. Thank you, Drew. Um, and we want to welcome everybody uh, for joining us. Super excited to talk about this. This is the second of the series of VMUX that we have been doing. Uh, today's discussion is mostly going to be structured around the use cases for VMware vSAN data persistence platform with Cloudian Object Storage. It's my pleasure to welcome Gopala Suryanarayana. Gopala, really excited to again work with you and talk about the different use cases. Welcome. Hey, San hey Sanjay, glad to be working with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's just quickly go through the agenda item for today. Like I said, right, we'll just briefly cover what Cloud and Hyperstore and VMware vSAN integration looks like, why, why Cloud and Object Storage solution, and why VMware Data Persistence Platform. And then we'll focus a lot of time on the use cases, right? We'll discuss the benefits of these use cases and then obviously talk about how you can get started. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Um, again, this is the second of the series. So for people who want to know more about the integration and the individual components of our solution, please look at the link that Grant has pasted in the, in the chat session that will take you to the previous uh, uh, VMUG that we did. Today's just a summary, like you know, as you all know, VMware has invested a lot in bringing the Kubernetes uh, workloads to vSphere and uh, through the vSAN data persistence platform has enabled uh, bringing solutions like Cloudian Hyperstore into the VMware ecosystem, right? You know, this platform allows uh, us to deliver Cloudian's S3 API compatible, enterprise grade, exabyte scalable, like you know, secure object storage solution so that we can now leverage the Cloudian story and the object storage use care for various workloads and applications that require cloud-like storage access. Gobala. What this platform has been the foundational for bringing all the services and enabling some of the newer use cases, right? You know, it allows the runtime modern application. What do you think about uh, just uh, giving our viewers some overview of what we are trying to do out here? Sure. Uh, so, Sanjay, as you mentioned, um, we are seeing from a VMware perspective a lot of interest in uh, running services like object stores. Object stores have become the de facto storage for many, many use cases, uh, primarily the modern application use case. And VMware is uh, very serious about uh, making it uh, easy for our customers to onboard object stores uh, and uh, in turn onboard uh, their modern applications on VMware. And data persistence platform is our, uh, is our answer to uh, how we are uh, enabling those kinds of use cases, right? So this, this platform here is built on the industry leading uh, technologies like vSAN, vSphere, uh, VMware Cloud Foundation, uh, but it takes it one step further and builds that platform which will make it easy for uh, partners like you to bring on your object stores, uh, provide that uh, efficient way of operations for customers, and also provide that best performance in TCO on, on vSphere, right? So, so that is vSAN data persistence platform. Absolutely, and I think we'll talk, like I said, right, there's more information, uh, but let's just quickly do a summary of why Cloudian. For people who don't know, Cloudian is a software-defined enterprise-grade object storage solution. We have over 500 plus enterprise customers. And if you look at today, you know it's the single largest individual object storage solution out there, which is highest uh, rated in terms of Gartner's critical capabilities for different use cases. And also from a peer perspective, like you know, all the Gartner peer insights have rated Cloudian as the highest uh, performant object storage solution. Not only does uh, the Cloud in Apple Store uh, offer enterprise features uh, functionalities, it also offers a slew of, uh, of data protection and security certification that are essential for some of the use cases that we talk about in the modern day 
around protection of data. How do we protect against uh, and protect your assets, which has become the most crucial component, right? You know, it offers native implementation of S3 APIs, which means it you can get uh, guaranteed compatibility and, and and enable you to now bring those ecosystem of S3 APIs into the platform so that you can now support all the different modern cloud native and, and DevOps kind of use cases and be reliant and be sure that, you know, if your applications that are built on cloud or using S3 APIs are now going to be compatible and, and enable this transition between hybrid and multi-cloud. We are a VMware certified solution. The partnership of Cloudian goes beyond just the vSAN the, uh, data persistent platform integration. Cloudian is a strategic partner for VMware where we have solutions uh, ranging in different use cases for different prof uh, different customers, right? Including our service providers that can benefit from the cloud integration. So it's, it's a complete story. It's a complete uh, enterprise grade platform that will be available on VMware's uh, ecosystem. Talking about VMware ecosystem, Gopala, as you said earlier, right, you know, vSAN data persistent platform to me is a glue that ties all these pieces, right? So let's let's just give our, our viewers an, an overview of what, what this is and why right. vSAN data persistent platform. Right, so like I mentioned, uh, what our customers are trying to do is uh, they're trying to deploy all of these uh, services uh, on top of uh, VMware Cloud Foundation, primarily, uh, primarily to make it possible for uh, their application teams to consume uh, the services and also uh, build a cloud, uh, right? And to offer that cloud to their application developers. And to enable that, what we have done is we have built this data persistence platform. Uh, essentially, uh, this takes uh, all of the uh, individual components that we have, uh, the compute storage network uh, in vSphere, uh, vSAN, and NSXT, the industry-leading uh, flagship components. Uh, we bring it together with uh, VMware Cloud Foundation. Um, the STDC manager that you see there uh, is the best of the breed. It helps with day zero as well as day two operations for various components. Uh, and not just that, we uh, we bring in the management suite as well, uh, which we realize, right? So we bring in all of these things. Uh, and then vSphere with Tanzu uh, builds on top of these components and offers that uh, modern Kubernetes platform for uh, for developers. Uh, so you have all of the the VMware Cloud Foundation stack, and we have the VS, vSphere with Tanzu, which is the 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 distribution Kubernetes distribution that's running on vSphere. And then the data persistence platform brings all of this together and now up levels this conversation to now say, hey, look, you have object stores, you have other modern stateful services that you can deploy. So as you can see here, uh, we have taken the best of the breed and then we have offered that uh, higher capability of services uh, which is why data persistence platform is, is extremely compelling for uh, for our customers exactly and i think to me this is this is basically bringing like you know the two best solutions right you know we have a proven hci platform now with the data persistence platform and kubernetes support you have the ability to support, like, you know, people have been using VMware for ages, right? You know, it's a proven solution. And now by bringing in the data persistence platform, the Kubernetes support, now you have a, a platform that can deliver uh, and meet requirements for developers as well as enterprise applications. And then now when you combine that with the best of breed object storage solution that brings in the enterprise grade functionalities, native S3 API compatibility, allows you to start small and, and grow uh, and scales uh, without any disruption. It's very modular. You now have a recipe for a, a platform that is complementary and allows you to do uh, a lot more, like literally you're bringing cloud technology into your data center and, and building a private cloud platform that can support your enterprise needs as well as your, um, your modern cloud application needs, right? Enabling your developers, enabling your critical applications and meeting all the requirements. Um, from a deployment perspective, it also is very simple. Since we are talking about platform, you, our viewers and our users will have a choice you can either deploy Cloudian on the same platform so that you can have co six coexisting uh, solutions where you can use S3 APIs and object storage for, for applications that require S3 access, 
or you can use traditional vSAN block and file storage for your enterprise applications. If, if at all there is a need for a standalone uh, object storage solution, you can deploy Cloudian as a standalone solution while still running on the same platform so that you can now have a, a cluster, right, where you can have dedicated nodes uh, or you can have coexisting nodes, which allows you to increase the utilization of your existing customer uh, resources, right? You know, it simplifies the management because everything is managed centrally through vCenter, right? And, uh, and now you can, uh, you can expand this use cases to go beyond uh, the classic traditional use cases, Gopala. That's right. Uh, that's right. And uh, these both of these are uh, uh, very compelling because what the first model lets you do is that consolidation, which is key uh, for existing cluster deployments. Customers can uh, use that and provide that same cluster to object storage. But uh, if, you have, if you have a need to uh, get better storage efficiencies from the cluster, um, we have this technology called vSAN Direct, which could be used for uh, that standalone kind of a deployment model, wherein you get closer to the bare metal efficiencies uh, uh, with the with the object storage, right? So both of them are very compelling, and both of them are useful for our customers. Yeah, I mean, and we're super excited, right? From all the discussions that we have had with customers, right? You know, this is is this this is going to be a critical solution that uh, that is going to be really trans transforming how uh, the enterprises and organizations are looking to modernize their data centers. Talking about modernization, let's just quickly talk about the use cases, right? You know, we will go in depth, uh, but why object storage, right? You know, this is something now that the industry understands, uh, I think it's been proven, right? You know, I think Gopala, you mentioned this at the start, like, you know, the, the object storage has become a more of a critical driver for, or for, for modern applications, as well as uh, when it comes to managing data, large amounts of data, unstructured data, whether it's because of data protection, like backup, archive, DR, or whether you're talking about a data lake kind of solution where you are talking about machine data, big data, uh, media entertainment, security, uh, research data, so on and so forth, or uh, like, you know, if you want to just meet your compliance needs because of all the security and certification and holding your data for long periods of time, or like, you know, last camp, whether you want to basically build that private cloud platform and offer offer your different constituents, uh, different storage choices and SLAs as a service. So Gopala, you have seen this, like, you know, object storage drivers are, are something that is a major driver for bringing this solution to market, right? Right. Uh, like you mentioned, Sanjay, um, we have been hearing object storage need uh, on, on multiple fronts. Um, the, the modern application is definitely one, one big source of uh, request for uh, object storage. But likewise, there are also other drivers uh, like you mentioned. Uh, so, so clearly, uh, I would not be wrong in saying that object storage is one of the key value drivers, primary value drivers for a data persistence platform and the reason for which we have, uh, we have done that platform. Absolutely, and, and then we at Cloudian have seen this, right? We have seen the unprecedented growth in the unstructured data. We have seen how our customers are using object storage in a very diverse way, right? Whether it's data protection, whether it's analytics, and, and that's what we're gonna look into today, right? You know, we'll go into different use cases. Just uh, a single, uh, like, you know, the, uh, summarizing the different use cases and what this brings to the table. What now you are looking for is getting a unified platform that allows you to now get S3 object storage, block and file access on a simple, scalable, enterprise-grade converged platform that can help you meet your application requirement, uh, whether it's your traditional applications like, you know, um, like Oracle or SQL, um, or you're looking at modern applications like, you know, analytics like Splunk, or even uh, uh, Kubernetes led um, like you know modern cloud applications, right? You know you have the ability now to leverage this platform to modernize your data center and run any applications at any scale, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud, so that you can lower the total cost of ownership and be able to derive more from your existing investments in in VMware as well as expanding that investments through bringing uh, object storage and, and expanding the use cases for the solution. 
let's let's just talk about uh, data protection right you know why why data protection is an important use case right you know one of the things that uh, in this day and age today's world right you know when we're dealing with this pandemic um, and uh, everybody working from home and also when the data has become the most crucial and critical asset for any organization data protection has has never been more important right you know whether it's because uh, of uh, security uh, no prevention against ransomware uh, or just managing your data growth so that you can have that data available at any point in any time right you know uh, your recovery points and uh, recovery time objectives have changed your slas have changed you're looking to get access and service your data wherever you are in a in a way that allows you to meet your applications requirement um, so that means that the data needs to be available um, you know and accessible as fast as possible um, and uh, without uh, the need for you to change your your workflows right you know the traditional backup uh, applications workflows are still the same right you know most of this application now support s3 object storage so that you can leverage uh, the 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 tco of an object storage solution and be able to meet some of these data protection challenges while modernizing your your data protection uh, ecosystem you know gopala this this to us is one of the primary drivers right you know it's like you know this is a, not a, a very sexy use case but it is something that every every organization is dealing with right and uh, we we do hear this from uh, our customers uh, as well uh, sanjay and uh, given these unprecedented times this comes up more often uh, these these days uh, because like you mentioned this is on the top of uh, everybody's mind uh, and definitely our customers as well yeah absolutely and and again the reason why it's off the top of the mind is ransomware right you know we know right. why because you know if you look at it every other day there is an incident that needs to be uh, uh, is like you know coming up to the the forefront and those are very scary right you know businesses are really really concerned about all this ransomware attacks and it has a tremendous impact on whether on your businesses, whether you're a hospital, whether you're financial services, whether you are an IT firm, it is today's top five risk to the world economy, right? You know, every uh, 11 attack, every 11 second, there is an attack that happens uh, for ransomware, right? And, uh, and there has been 97% increase over the last two years. And what what's the sad part about this is like about 51% of the companies end up paying ransom. And that's basically a huge impact to the company's bottom line, right? You know, it's about $20 billion in terms of cost. Um, and, um, and if you look at some of the analysis and statistics out there, roughly it translates about 200K average per ransomware attack. But, but you know, the damage that it caused to the business is far more than ransom, right? You know, now you have reputation at stake, you have uh, integrity at stake, the litigation at stake, and, 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 and the CIOs and the CSOs and CXOs are looking at ways to protect against this. And when with VMware, right, you know, when you're running your critical applications on the VMware ecosystem, protecting that data also is an important component. And this is where, where Cloudian and the and the the integrated solution comes into the picture. But before we jump ahead, let's understand why the ransomware protection, uh, why why it fails. Today's legacy pro, um, uh, the best way to say this is like today's solutions out there are mostly reliant on you know what I'll I'll put a corporate firewall, which is easy to compromise in nowadays, right? You know, and there are so many novel phishing attacks out there. We are email scams, phone scams, bad actors are all over the place. And one thing they have done is they realize that, you know, their backup data is a critical asset and let's target that first. And the reason why um, it is easy because, you know, it's staying there, it's been put around, it's mostly out in the open, not access and a lot of other a rogue actors have access to the backup copies, right? You know, it is uh, it is typically not uh, encrypted, so um, it is very easy to uh, capitalize on those assets. And there is lots and lots of data, right? You know, because it's just not the runtime environment. There's lots and lots of data out there. 
Um, and the best way to stop from ransomware is to make sure that that data is immutable. Why? Because you know what ransomware is about is I get access to your data and I encrypt it and I hold you hostage so that you know you cannot uh, read your data unless and until you pay me. Right? And when you pay them, they give you the key so that you can access your data. But if you were to lock up your data, make it immutable so that you know they cannot encrypt it. Immutable means that you make it uh, write protected, right? You know, you cannot write data or override that data. That will allow you to prevent against ransomware. And, uh, and that's basically the worm support comes into the picture, right? You know, backing up your data to a worm storage uh, allows you to um, mitigate the ransomware attacks and protect against ransomware. With Cloudian, you now have the ability to do that. Cloudian supports S3 APIs. As I said, right, we have native implementation, and this is why you want to work with an object storage solution that brings in that S3 API ecosystem and compatibility because there is a way to protect against ransomware and, and offer immutable storage through S3 object lock APIs, which allow you to now uh, not only configure this, but also allow flexibility in terms of how your retention time should be. Right, you know, most of the backup applications have uh, support for this, right? So that they can now introduce this into their workflow with the integration with our VMware Data Persistence Platform. You now have the ability to bring this solution into the VMware ecosystem so that now you can have a single platform where you're running your applications and also protecting the data by running and having object storage solution um, on VMware protecting that data. The reason why this is very important is Cloudian knows and understands security, right? You know, we have the highest grade, military grade security, right? We have the certifications that go along with our implementation of S3 APIs. And it's not just the certification of Worm, right? You know, we have a critical federal certification that allows and proves that, you know, we can make the solution tamper proof. So there are no back doors and that also is critical, right? And a lot of people just talk about uh, worm support, but if they have back doors, then it defeats the purpose. So those are all the different things that needs to be considered, right? You know, Cloudian has been proven, has been used in the most uh, um, like, you know, critical applications like Milk Cloud, uh, which is the Department of Defense Cloud. And uh, again, we have full, security functionalities that are needed and that let's talk about the now why is this important and gopala this is this is such an easy solution but such a critical solution right most right. of our customers today run their critical applications on vmware vsphere ecosystem right you know you have your vmware uh, applications running vsphere on vsphere you have your vsan that brings in enterprise hyperconvert storage so that you can now deliver on critical performance and capabilities and now you can just expand this platform and be able to uh, protect uh, the application and the data on the same platform using cloud and uh, hyperstore s3 right. object storage right so so basically the beauty of this platform here is that uh, you can use your existing cluster deploy Cloudian on, on, the, on your existing cluster and uh, really open up uh, for uh, many of the use cases that Cloudian offers, right? So without having to invest in a new cluster, you can consolidate Cloudian into your existing deployments uh, within your existing operations, right? So that is, that is the, the real value that we are bringing in here. Exactly, and the flexibility of deployment that we initially talked about is showcased, is showcased out here, right? You know, you can have dense nodes and uh, have a dedicated environment so that you can still, but manage everything as a single platform. And why is that important? Because, you know, you are now reducing the operational costs, right? You know, and getting the benefits and economics of object storage so that you are overall consolidating, modernizing while uh, saving money, right? You know, it's going to be, 100 times faster than writing to a tape. And you can take advantage of uh, an object storage solution that can be deployed across multiple sites. So you can get an integrated DR story and the ecosystem, like, you know, which is compatible with most of the leading backup applications as well as DR applications. And this, this is 
uh, something that you can get started uh, very easily. Like Gopala said, they just uh, you can deploy this on your existing platforms and uh, start small and grow. So this, and now let's jump into the next big one, right? You know, this is a super exciting uh, use case. Why? It's because, you know, if you look at what people are trying to do with their data, right? You know, you have data has become a most critical asset and, uh, and people are looking to derive intelligent information from their data so that they can monetize this data. And what Splunk does is it allows you to analyze your machine data, right? Uh, whether it's coming from um, different machines, IOTs, endpoints, logs, whatsoever it may be, so that you can quickly uh, look at that data, analyze it, analyze and, and then be able to derive meaningful information from it. If you look at how Splunk works, like, you know, we, I'm showing you this architectural diagram of a classic Splunk where you have indexers that basically are processors uh, which process the incoming machine data. You typically have your uh, indexer storage, which is basically uh, high performance SSD storage, which is basically where all the data that has been processed is stored, right? You know, there is, Splunk has this tiered concept of, uh, you know, where you have your indexer storage that are sized for hot, warm buckets so that you can have your different retention policies. And, and they also have uh, default replication. So, you know, they, they protect this by replicas. So they now, whatever storage you have, you basically need 3x the kind of storage on the back end so that you can protect it, right? And then on the cold buckets, right, you know, which are basically when your data gets cold, you now need to replicate this into a file storage or a NAS storage today. It's a pretty expensive solution. Um, and, uh, and also uh, some of these challenges that are available to and what, why this becomes a limitation factor is because you need a lot of indexers when you're processing lots and lots of data. That means you need lots and lots of uh, hot storage and flash storage. And, and multiply that by three times, right? And, uh, and then if you have retention times that are pretty large, then you need to make sure that you have expensive NAS and SAN storage. And if you ever want to basically operate this in a cloud, it just moving data in and out, there is a cloud tax. What Splunk has done is they realized this, right? And what they did was they, came up with this disaggregated architecture where they are now disaggregating the indexer, the computes, and the storage. And uh, again, this is where the value of object storage comes into the picture because most of these modern applications today understand that S3 and object storage is where the data needs to be because that's where the scale is and the storage is and the economics of storage is. So Splunk, has created an architecture called Smart Store, which basically allows this disaggregation of compute and storage and the ability to leverage S3 object storage for, for the different uh, like, you know, retention layers, combining the warm and cold into one big large repository of data lake on S3, right? And why this is important? It's very simple, right? Now, what you can do is, you can run your indexers on your our compute and your fast storage uh, where you have SSDs and that is protected. So you're not now, when you need to process more data, you can simply buy more indexers and process it. You're not buying expensive storage to go with it, right? You're decoupling the compute and storage. And if you need your data to be protected and retained for a longer period of time, you can now use the object storage that will be much more economical as integrated data protection in itself so that you can now uh, keep that data longer while still searchable through Splunk because Splunk has this concept of warm cache, which basically is a, a cache for all the data that it has cleared or transferred or migrated into object storage along with the hot copy of the data that is just processed which is the what you need to keep it on a fast SSD storage and everything else can be kept on an object storage. So then it's still searchable as one single big repository. This is game changer when it comes to Splunk deployments 
And we are super excited about this solution and how it can bring value into the uh, uh, the solution that VMware, vSAN, uh, Data uh, and Cloudian brings. And Gopala, this is something that a lot of our customers have shown a lot of interest. And the reason is very simple, right? You know, now you have a proven VMware platform where you can run your Splunk indexers on vSphere and use the vSAN for your hot storage and the on the cache, uh, called warm cache. And then with Cloudian, you can now on the same platform run object storage and take advantage of the economics but still maintain the entire stack on a single platform. That's right. And um, like you mentioned, uh, vSAN uh, is the best of the breed uh, for uh, for high performance applications. So vSAN will uh, very neatly fit the bill for the uh, indexers. Uh, and uh, up until now, there was uh, no way for customers to have an S3 uh, in the same kind of a, a realm of uh, the, the operations, right? And with vSAN Direct and uh, Cloudian uh, on top of Data Persistence Platform, customers can very cleanly carve out uh, another uh, vSphere cluster and along, uh, along with the vSAN for indexer, they can deploy Splunk uh, the, for, the, uh, for the cold and the warm uh, tier. They can use the, the vSAN Direct and the Cloudian. But uh, in a nutshell, what this offers customers is that uh, ability to split their uh, storage needs onto vSAN as well as Cloudian. But more importantly, I keep going back to that operational simplicity. Um, we provide that kind of a unified management and operational simplicity so that it's all vSphere for them. It's all vSphere. Uh, it's all uh, the same kind of uh, look and feel and management model, but we are able to uh, expose this new use case uh, with this uh, tiered uh, storage. Absolutely. And I think that's the most important piece, right? You know, if you look at it, you know, it simplifies your stack. Now you're not managing like, you know, uh, your compute, your fast storage, your NAS storage, or your object storage. This is everything is managed through a single vSAN uh, uh, VMware uh, pain, uh, right? You know whether it's vCenter or the operational tools that VMware has, and and then and treating this as a single platform so that you can carve out those different resources and be able to uh, maximize the value of this uh, platform and the ecosystem, right? And by running and scaling those components individually as you need, so that you can bring value to the uh, to the use case. You know, talking about benefits, one of the things that you this solution brings, and we'll we'll talk about this right now. We have um, at Cloudian, we have uh, experience in in Splunk deployments. We have our customers that have deployed Splunk and have uh, have seen significant TCO benefits. Right, you know, we are talking about eighty percent savings on the storage infrastructure. And uh, and we can definitely, if people are interested, there is a TCO paper on our Cloudian's website that talks about how our customers have benefited in in a Splunk environment where they now have the ability to do, uh, like you know, scale their storage, keep that data around, whether it's like you know, hundreds of terabytes to to petabytes, hundreds of petabytes, right? You know, it brings down uh, the cost without uh, uh, adding any more risk. And it, it, it is basically like you know, bringing your cloud economics to your data center. Talking about TCO, like I said, right, you know, this is a sample TCO breakup. Um, you know, when you talk about indexers, like I talked earlier, right, you know, indexers are the, the machinery, right, the engine, that process. So you need the compute to be powerful. And, uh, and the, in the older days, right, you know, in the Splunk case, where if you needed to process more data, you would need to buy more indexers, right? And the licenses are based on indexer nodes uh, that Splunk charges. Now, even if you uh, like, you know, just needed to store that data and longer uh, because the compute and storage was integrated, right? You know, you may you may have to buy expensive uh, compute nodes and storage nodes, which now with the decoupling of, of uh, compute and storage you can reduce that cost because you can now just have indexer which are compute nodes which are uh, reasonably better price and uh, and then leverage the economics of object storage so you can bring down the amount of indexers that are needed uh, because you're not just going to um, scale indexers if you just need storage you can just uh, keep that indexer count fixed uh, 
Um, you can reduce your storage infrastructure because now we are offloading to S3, which is uh, significantly uh, cheaper as compared to a NAS boxes and NAS solutions. And in a typical TCO that we have done with some of our customers, we see about uh, uh, 60 to 70 percent. Obviously, uh, when, uh, when we talk about this in a VMware solution, uh, since we are looking at consolidation, you may get significant other benefits on the operational sides. Uh, there might be a little bit tax on the VMware uh, ecosystem by running everything on the same platform, but we roughly expect the, the TCO to be around 60 to 70%, depending on your environment and what kind of process you are uh, looking to get done. Gopala, this is, this is huge, right? Right. Uh, so basically, um, uh, like I mentioned, <clears throat> customers uh, reach out to us because they are already sold on vSphere and vSAN, uh, and they have this use case for Splunk. Uh, and uh, like what you said, uh, providing them that uh, simplified unified management uh, with uh, attractive uh, uh, TCO uh, really seals the deal uh, for such use cases on uh, vSAN and VDPP with Claudia. So we talked about the data protections use case. We talked about the analytics use case like Splunk. And I think the third third pillar on this is the modern applications, right? And the need for persistent storage. And Gopala, this is obviously one of the bigger drivers for VMware Tanzu and uh, and what's the happening in the application landscape. Do you want to talk about this a little bit? Sure, uh, definitely. So, um, so VMware has been seeing a, a significant increase uh, in the number of uh, modern applications that are uh, landing on uh, our platform, right? Um, so that is the reason that uh, VMware as a company has invested uh, both organically as well as through uh, acquisitions, uh, a lot of uh, uh, initiatives to make it possible, make it easy for our customers to uh, onboard their modern applications on vSphere. Uh, similar to how we have supported traditional applications for a long time, our, our uh, strategy is to actually now build the platform for these modern applications. Right? A quick uh, landscape check uh, tells us that you know um, Gartner and other uh, IDC and other such analysts are predicting that we will have a significant number of these applications land uh, on the enterprise platforms. Uh, by one estimate, it is uh, half a billion of these applications will be around in the next few years, uh, which is a lot of these applications. Uh, and it turns out that uh, object stores have become the de facto storage uh, for all of these modern applications, right? These modern applications that are using Kubernetes, containers, etc. Um, now, uh, as, as a default option, depend on object storage. Uh, their developers uh, depend on things like cloud consumption models, self-service, etc., to consume storage uh, uh, as against something like waiting for a ticket uh, to be assigned and given the storage for them. It's, it's all self-service. Uh, so object storage uh, is, is a mainstay uh, for modern applications. And, uh, for any serious, uh, uh, you know, platform that offers uh, support for modern applications, we definitely need to have the support for uh, object storage uh, thought out, right? And uh, Sanjay, if you can go to the next slide, um, uh, that is the reason what we are seeing is uh, we we hear about these things all the time from customers, and uh, object storage is one of the main things that we have done uh, to support uh, these modern uh, applications. Absolutely, and, and I think just if I may elaborate on this, right, you know, the application landscape is changing, right? This modern applications are evolving into this whole microservices architecture, uh, which are like, you know, uh, read, write, many, write, many kind of uh, applications through RESTful APIs. And unfortunately, like, you know, the storage ecosystem hasn't evolved to support this, and this is where object storage uh, becomes uh, a critical component as a building block for modern applications, right? You know, what enterprise really want is from their storage platform or their infrastructure is this uh, flexibility, right? You know, whether it's uh, uh, performance, it's, um, it's about uh, TCO or access, like read many, write many, API driven self-service kind of uh, uh, architecture which is uh, compliant and uh, can be portable, right? You know, when you have this API-based architecture, right? You know, it allows you to take advantage of this uh, 
cloud-like uh, uh, interfaces so that you can deploy the services dynamically and can scale those services dynamically, right? And, and this is what uh, the VMware plus Cloudian solution brings to the table, Gopala, right? You know, this is a summary of what you were just talking about. Right, right. Uh, so, so like you mentioned, uh, Sanjay, um, uh, storage needs to keep up uh, with uh, with the applications, right? So, what that means is uh, we will now need to cater to uh, uh, both the developers as well as the operators of storage. Uh, so, one of the key benefits of the integrated solution of uh, Cloudian uh, with Data Persistence Platform is we provide that uh, agility and flexibility um, when it comes to uh, using storage. Uh, developers will continue to use what they have uh, been taught uh, using the cloud consumption model. They use self-service to consume S3 APIs. Uh, at the same time, um, administrators and operators will continue to hold control, whether it comes to policies, whether it comes to quotas, uh, permissions, etc. All of that is still uh, done by the administrators, uh, but now developers uh, will, will continue to consume that using the, the self-service uh, APIs. Uh, if I may also talk about some of the, the other benefits, um, one thing that this gives, this platform gives is that better uh, TCO and uh, performance uh, capabilities for object stores on top of uh, the data persistence platform using the uh, existing enterprise grade uh, platform that vSphere already offers, right? So you get best of the both worlds with this, with this platform. Uh, and uh, lastly, um, for customers who have already invested in vSphere, uh, right? Uh, they can get started uh, with uh, a minimal uh, effort. Uh, so they can get started small, uh, deploying it on the existing Visa and vSphere cluster, uh, and then expand from there, uh, right? So that is that is a very good way for customers to begin and then uh, land and expand their uh, uh, deployments on uh, Cloudian Object Store. Exactly, and uh, and I think it's, it's the whole idea of uh, where the enterprise IT can now take their existing VMware uh, ecosystem and easily expand this to modern so that they can leverage their existing skill sets, uh, bring in the modern uh, object storage access uh, for their modern applications while still maintaining control of this data is very important, right? And now security is still gonna be important, whether it's cloud native applications or traditional applications, right? So you need to make sure that, you know, your uh, S3 object store, it still delivers on those things, right? You know, you are just not looking for access as a way to differentiate and support modern applications. The enterprise requires more than that, right? And that's why you need an enterprise care, uh, enterprise grade object storage solution. And not only just that, Gopala, I think um, it's uh, data protection for those modern application is also still very relevant, right? You know, whether it's traditional applications or modern applications, data still needs to be protected. And with the ability uh, for for Cloudian, which is already proven and integrated with solutions like VMware Valero or uh, Veeam's latest acquisition in terms of Kasten, right? You know, or other data protection solutions for Kubernetes, right? You know, you now have the ability to extend um, in a multi-tenant way, right? You know, the Cloudian S3 object storage solution that can be used for protection of uh, uh, this modern applications, whether it's the containers or the data or the repositories. That's correct, that's correct. And um, uh, like you mentioned, Valero um, gives you a very clean way uh, to orchestrate the different persistent volumes uh, if you are dealing with modern Kubernetes applications. Uh, and with that integration, um, customers can uh, take uh, backups of their uh, Kubernetes clusters uh, and uh, uh, store it to an, uh, any repository that is uh, compliant with this uh, with this uh, framework here. Uh, and uh, Cloudian offering an object storage uh, will will fit the bill very neatly, and uh, we can uh, support some of these uh, modern application backup use cases with uh, with Cloudian as well. And and I think this this three different use cases why we picked these three different use cases because we wanted to showcase the classical data protection use case we wanted to showcase the the modern analytics uh, kind of use case as well as the modern applications right you know the 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 use cases are endless and gopala do you want to talk about this platform benefits sure so uh, so this is simply summarizing what we have uh, discussed till now 
Um, in a nutshell, the data persistence platform and Cloudian integration um, offers a, a very compelling way for customers to run uh, object stores uh, on vSphere and vCF. Uh, in fact, for the first time, uh, this is what uh, we are offering for the customers, a, a good way to run object stores on vSphere. So uh, primarily, we are going after uh, three, three major benefits for, uh, for customers. So for one, uh, we are reducing the, the total cost of operations of running uh, services like object stores uh, with vSAN data persistence platform. Uh, in, in, we are doing this with uh, multiple different uh, features in the, in the, in the platform. Uh, one important feature is that, you know, um, like we talked about, uh, we do not require uh, customers to learn new skills to manage their object stores. You can leverage your existing skills, uh, both in terms of uh, existing investments, uh, as well as uh, skill sets for uh, vSphere administrators, uh, and you, you now get the object storage. Uh, with things like vSAN Direct, uh, we are able to now offer uh, uh, you know, uh, bare metal efficiencies uh, for object storage, so that is also going to drive down the, the cost of operation. Uh, increased velocity is, is very important for customers who are looking to onboard modern applications and uh, that agility, that increased agility uh, velocity that we provide for customers to develop their modern applications using their cloud consumption models right on vSphere is, is a big deal for customers, uh, right? And that is primarily uh, what this increased velocity means. You now are able to deploy your applications, develop your applications, iterate on your applications much faster uh, with a platform like data persistence platform. Uh, and uh, finally, that simplified operations that vSphere and vSAN have always been known for, right? Um, uh, we, we simplify the monitoring, uh, the day zero, day two uh, operations, all of those uh, that vSphere and HCI uh, has always been known for. We are extending all of those capabilities uh, to Cloudian uh, in this case, right? So we are extending that to the object stores. Um, which is again um, what our customers have been asking for. So in a nutshell, we believe that uh, these benefits uh, are going to be very useful for customers uh, and this Cloudian and data persistence platform is, is key to you know, making those modern applications land uh, and uh, be a compelling platform for those applications. Yeah, and Gopal, I couldn't have said this better. I think you hit the nail on all these three components. Right? You know, the simplest way for me is you know, remember what I said, right? You're taking best of the breed VMware solution, best of the breed object storage solution, combining those together to bring in the complete benefit of uh, uh, two different individual solutions and combining into a single unified platform that is managed uh, through single pane of glass, right? So that you can deliver uh, value, lower your TCO, while accelerating the modernization effort that you have, right? You know, bringing that uh, uh, platform that brings in the cloud technology is is extremely valuable, and uh, and expanding that ecosystem of applications and use cases that go along with it, um, you know, it's it's something that uh, we believe is going to standardize how uh, data centers are modernized moving forward, right? Uh, so right. talking about that. Um, just to close on these uh, today's VMUG, right? You know, this is what is your next step, right? You know, learn more about this solution. Like I said, right? We this is our second uh, VMUG. We did a detailed um, VMUG about the solution uh, in our first session. This was the use cases that we wanted to talk about. Three different use cases. We'll come back to you with more specifics. Just so reach out to us, give us your feedback, tell us what you want to hear. Go visit uh, the the solution webpage. Download the uh, the solution brief. And if you are interested in trying this out, or if you want to uh, participate and get your hands on this, please do send us know. We have uh, a way to showcase the solution to you, where you can nav uh, like you know get uh, more of a hands on. Uh, uh, experience in a POC like environment. So we are, we can facilitate that for you so that you can see it firsthand. Gopal, any closing thoughts before we take questions? No, so um, yeah, so we would love to hear from you. So uh, you have the email address there. So uh, if you have any thoughts, um, if you have other use cases that you could think of, we would be all ears. So please do reach out to us uh, and we'd love for you to try our uh, software. Uh, and uh, thank you. Very much for for joining it had been it has been a good call so uh, thank you for for your time 
To find out more about the VMUG webcast program, visit vmug.com. You guys really uh, did an excellent job, and I want to thank you both. Um, lastly, uh, from all of us here at VMUG, thank you, and have a great rest of your day. Take right. care, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.